Hey, I'm Sven Masterson, co-founder and one of the principal mentors in the Mentoring Men community. In this video, I want to answer one of our members' questions that came up a week or two ago. And I want to share this video with the public because I think it can offer a little bit of insight for men experiencing relationship difficulties and kind of trying to figure out where they fit in the grand scheme of things with, within their relationship. The question was asked, how do I be the hero for my wife when she insists on seeing me as the villain? Now, to understand this, this language of villain and hero, I wanna uh, introduce you to a concept <clears throat> introduced by the author Donald Miller, who wrote a book called Hero on a Mission. And in that book, Miller talks about every story that we live in uh, the, the, the great stories we watch, that we write, they all generally have four main roles. And those main roles are the victim, the villain, the hero, and the guide. And so the man asking this question is actually referencing um, this, this concept. He's read this book. It's part of some of our curriculum. And he's saying to, to us and asking even himself, that, um, hey, I wanna be my wife's hero, and she sees me instead as the villain. And so I wanna talk about this concept, help him understand what's going on, but also show you a common pattern that men in marriage fall into and why it's destructive to both he and his partner. The first thing you gotta understand is if a man says, I want to be a hero, okay? The hero really only has one role that it interacts with, and that is the victim. Now, let me explain briefly Miller's other things here. A hero that goes on to show other people how to be heroes is the guide. Um, a victim that stays in their victimization and gets so angry they decide to spread their pain and their anguish becomes a villain. And so if you're familiar with Star Wars, for example, Anakin Skywalker at some point uh, is a victim who instead of, of going the route of healing and restoration, goes the route of continued darkness and making his pain, actually his identity and something to spread and becomes Darth Vader. Hero, Luke Skywalker, guide, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, etc. So hopefully you can orient yourself there. Now when a man says in marriage, I want to be my wife's hero, I want you to think about what that implies here. What does that leave her as far as the role that she plays? If the man is in the hero and he can transition to guide, but who can the hero really act upon? He can act upon victims. And this is one of the problems with this idea that a man can be a woman's hero in marriage. I'm not saying there aren't places for men to show up in heroic ways in both life and marriage. Certainly there is. It's baked into a man's heart to be heroic. We start when we're little boys daydreaming about rescuing and, and saving and interjecting ourselves into conflict and and helping and rescuing and being heroes. Those are good things. And I'm not, I'm not in any way trying to disparage the idea that, that men should not be heroes. But in marriage, when it shows up where a man says, I want to be her hero, and instead she sees me as her villain, it's important to understand what's going on. When you position yourself in your story of marriage as being your partner's hero, you are fundamentally placing her in the victim role. Now that means you're looking at her from a vantage point of there's something wrong, things are not as they should be, she's broken, she's damaged, she's inadequate, she's X, Y, Z, right? And this is actually really off-putting. It's really a low regard way oftentimes to see a partner. Now, it's not bad to want to rescue a partner in distress. But oftentimes a man has put himself in the hero role 
because he's put her in the victim role. And I want to talk to you about why a man sees a woman in the victim role to begin with, because this has everything to do with conflict in marriage and how you escape some of that conflict in marriage. Here's the issue. We all get married, men and women, with desires, expectations, hopes and dreams of what it's going to be like. And for a man, a man enters marriage having lived a life that is a male life. He looks through a male lens at the world. His worldview is male colored. So when he looks at an experience, he sees it as a male would see it. Now, likewise, when a woman gets married, she sees the world or has been seeing the world through a female lens. So she sees circumstances, stories, etc., the way that women would. And in marriage, when you get together, you're seeing each other through your individual lenses. So that means when I married my wife, Zelda, I saw Zelda through a male lens. And that lens sees things a male way. And so when I started looking at a female, I started to see female things through a male lens. Likewise, Zelda started to look at me, a male, through her female lens. And we both slowly concluded there is something wrong with this person. They're not behaving as I expect. They seem to be broken. Now, this seems to happen in every marriage. Every marriage encounters a point in time where you believe there's something really not right. Your spouse is not turning out to be the person you'd hope to be. You're disappointed, you're disillusioned, and you believe it's because they're broken. There's something wrong with them. And so we kind of use this powerful thing we have called a brain to start to try to find the reason, the meaning. And so we start telling stories. Oh, she's like this. Poor, poor sweet Zelda. She's like this because of father issues. She's like this because of abandonment. She's like this because of abuse, etc. And a woman is doing the same thing, saying, you know what? She sees herself as a hero, by the way. If I could just rescue him from his idiocy and his, his um, lack of understanding about blah, blah, blah. And so you have two people in marriage who believe the other person is broken. But what's really happening is we're experiencing judgment of the other person. We're judging the other person through the lens of self and concluding that because they're not like I expected, they must be broken. And we place them in the victim role. And so when a man does this, he thinks he's being virtuous. And I understand why, because the hero energy in a man is generally virtuous. It's born from a good place that wants to do good and be good in the world. But when we're living in this moment in marriage, we're, we're using that hero stance incorrectly and really ineffectively by believing that our spouse is this broken, victimized being. And a broken, victimized being to a man needs rescue. This is what he's been daydreaming about and playing and acting out as a kid. I'm going to rescue the damsel in distress. Except to her point of view, she's not in distress. She's not broken. She probably suffers like we all do from some shame and insecurity and a sense of inadequacy. But she's not a person that sees herself as fundamentally flawed. At least I hope she doesn't. Many do. And so when a man positions himself as the rescuer and the hero to a woman, it's a little bit, if not a lot, offensive. It's basically saying, honey, there's something greatly wrong with you. You're clearly broken. You're messed up. I can see you have issues. When can we be intimate? And this is the kind of story a man lives in. He lives in this energy that she's broken, she's dysfunctional, she's inadequate but at the same time asks her for intimacy, connection, and closeness. And this is tremendously, tremendously confusing to a woman. Likewise, it's just, it, just to get you some context as a man, it's just as confusing as when a woman comes to us and seems to indicate that there's something wrong with our masculinity, our character, our integrity, and then wants something like connection and closeness from us. That's the last thing a man wants to do is 
connect with a woman that he feels disrespect and unappreciated by, right? And so this is happening both ways. And I want you to understand this dynamic in marriage when you think about villain and victim and hero and God. The moment you position yourself as wanting to be the hero to a woman, you're placing her in the victim role. And when a woman is in the victim role, I want you to see her options here, right? Victims don't have guides, by the way. Victims can either become villains or they can become heroes. These are the ways they can move. They can move these directions, right? And so when a person feels victimized, there's usually somebody doing the the bad thing to them. And that's why she sees you as a villain because you put her in the victim role and it, by believing she's broken, inadequate, busted, etc. When you, when you treat her that way and she feels that, she's going to feel that with resentment and it's going to be seeing you as the villain role. And so what do you do here? What's, what's really going on? All right, so let me unpack this a little bit. You have to look at why do I see my wife as a victim? The true reason you see your wife as needing a hero is that you see her as deficient, as broken, as inadequate and not enough. And a man will do that usually because he has judged her as being deficient because, big, big because, she has not met his needs and wants and desires. To most men's thinking, it goes like this. I came into the relationship, I want, I want connection, I want emotional closeness, I want a feeling of appreciation, I want to feel um, respected, I want to feel like I'm valuable and worthy, and uh, I want to feel affirmed and validated. And a man in his immaturity uh, does not know that those things are internally sourced. He believes ineffectively and incorrectly that they come from her. And he starts to say in his mind, why is she not giving me these things? Why is it that she won't give me what I need? Now, the true thing going on here is this man is needy and dependent and enmeshed emotionally in his partner. He believes that those good things come into him from outside of him. And because they're not coming into him, because his wife is avoidant, she's not interested, maybe she's busying herself with everything but him, he says, well, there must be a cause to this. You know what? I bet it's her childhood. I bet it's her abuse. I bet it's her parent issues. I bet it's blah, 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 blah. And so he starts to essentially craft a story in which bad things have happened to his wife that has caused him to be deprived of his needs, wants, and desires. Now, the irony is this man is actually living in a victim story, but he places himself in his ego in the hero role. Well, if I can save her from her victimization, she could finally, you know, loosen, loosen the, the, I don't know what you call it, um, whatever is preventing me from, from having what I need. And it all could flow towards me again, right? Cause, because don't, don't people who are rescued by heroes adore them? Right? Don't they give them respect and appreciation and, and adoration and love and connection and warmth? And so a man starts to kind of like create these kind of like narratives in his head that if he rescues her, he gets the stuff. Heroes get the stuff. They get the woman, they get the money, they get the sports car, they get the yacht. And so the man says, okay, there's a victim I can rescue. And when I do, I'll get the stuff. The whole thing is just, it's, it's, it's bull crap. It's based on this idea that everything is outside of me. And if I can go ahead and do some sort of feat, like rescue a damsel in distress, I'm going to get the stuff that I feel like is missing in my life. And brother, let me tell you, that never comes. Because the real issue here is that you, as a man, are living in a victim story where the things that you want and need and desire are not inside of you, but outside of you. In fact, they're in, they're in the pocketbook or genitals or uh, affirming words of the woman in your life. And so you've kind of worked it out in your head. If I can rescue, if I could do some, 
some heroic action, she'll give it to me. What you're really experiencing is dependency. You're experiencing neediness. And it's about to ruin your relationship because you're treating her like she's broken. And when you put a woman in the role of feeling like a victim, she will see you as a villain. Now, what's a better way to live with heroic energy? The better way to, to live in this story is to realize that you have put yourself in a victim story. You're not a hero. You want to be, and that's good, and I affirm that. And I believe that's in your heart and my heart and in men's hearts and really all humans' hearts to live in a hero story. We love stories about heroes for a reason. But right now, if you have needs, wants, and desires that other people give you, you are living in a victim story. And the villain will be the evil person who's not giving to you the stuff that you need. This is the story a man's really living in. I'm victimized by my partner's unwillingness to give me appreciation, support, respect, kindness, all this stuff. And I've got to do something to make that stop. If she would just stop villainizing me, I could finally be happy and I could be the hero. And this is all, again, it's, it's bull crap. It doesn't work that way. And so when a man is feeling victimized, which every man will at some point, the solution is for him to self-rescue. That means he decides to be his own hero. Now, what does that look like in a man's life? That means you stop waiting for a partner, an employer, parents, neighbors, and friends to provide for you these, out, these, these things you think you need. You stop asking them to provide your sense of self, your sense of affirmation and validation, your sense of worth, your respect, your appreciation, your love, all these things. You learn that those things are in you. They're internally sourced. They don't come from people giving them to you. They don't come from outside heroes. They come from your own heart. When you do this, you transition from a, as a man from victim to hero in your own stories. You self-rescue. Now, now you truly are a hero and you can live as a hero in your own story. You see, I think our big problem is we try to be heroes in other people's stories long before we have ever been a hero in our own story. And so while the want is there, the experience is not. We can't rescue people if we can't rescue ourselves. Otherwise, you have this weird dynamic like where if you are your wife's hero and she's yours, how, how is that supposed to work? Because you're actually both victims. See what I mean? And so you have to turn this dynamic around. You have to move yourself from a victim role to a hero role. Now, when you're a hero role, the great place you can go from there is to the role of guide. And so rather than trying to be your wife's hero, it's better just to be your own hero because being your own hero qualifies you to be a guide. Now, a guide, back to Star Wars for a minute, and it, it is like um, Obi-Wan Kenobi and and Yoda. They're guides that share their experience, their wisdom with really anyone. They don't tell the other heroes what to do. They just show them what works with the path to being a hero. They don't make them a hero. They just cultivate and coax and bring along heroes in their hero journey. Every human is really on a hero journey. And guides are just, you know, people that figured that out and offer encouragement and support along the way. Now that is an appropriate thing in marriage. If a man has made this transition from victim to hero, he's fully qualified to be a guide in lots of lives, in the lives of other men, in the lives of his family. And is he a hero? Yes, a guide is a hero. A guide is a hero who is sharing their heroic wisdom and insight. But they're not doing it in a way that keeps people in a victim role. They're encouraging people to become their own heroes. That is the best way to be in marriage, to be your own hero and to, to, to uh, enthusiastically coach and encourage and support your partner on the path to their own heroic journey. See, if you're the hero, again, they're a victim, and that's not a very sexy and appealing place to be. It's not a place that a woman is going to want to be intimate if she's 
if, if the dynamic she has with you as a man or whatnot is one where she is, you know, owes you this re for this rescue, that creates obligation. That creates um, this, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, I can't think of it. She, she feels like a subject, like, boy, she's so fortunate that you rescued her. And a lot of men and their ego eat that up, but it's actually really not appealing as a foundation to build intimacy and connection and closeness. That's actually best done when heroes walk together. When each person knows, you know what? This was my story. This is how I overcame really myself. And then you have the commonality as two heroes walking together. The man having his own journey to becoming a hero in his own life and the woman becoming her own hero, having her own journey of overcoming her sense of victimization. You see, all of us have the opportunity as people who are hurting and suffering to become either the hero or the villain. And it's really remarkable when we choose the hero, the hero route, right? The invitation is always to become a villain. And when two people have learned to become independently heroes, they have the basis for a really great relationship. One where they're not, where they're interdependent and they can have union without dependency. The dependency is the space here of the victim. Interdependency and union is the space that heroes and guides share with one another. And so brother, I wanna encourage you, stop trying to rescue your wife. When you put yourself in the hero role, you're putting her in the victim role. And when she's in a victim role, you look like the villain. And that's what's causing you problems. This is what's eroding your intimacy. This is what is keeping you disconnected and from having passionate um, and deep connection with one another and vulnerability because a person feeling victimized is going to see that there's somebody behind it. And she's probably gonna see that you're behind it. So instead, aim to be the hero in your own life. And by doing so, a guide to her and to others who's open-hearted, open-minded, open-handed, and just available, accepting, and not judgmental as she has her own journey through life, hopefully to being a hero. If that caused you some curiosity, hopefully some no consternation, but if, if you're curious about what these ideas mean, um, the way they interplay in your relationship, the first thing I would do is invite you to read Donald Miller's book, Hero on a Mission. It's really about those roles as they show up in life in general. It's a good read. It's not a complicated or long read, and I think you'll find it very insightful. I'll put a link below in the description. If you want to go deeper than that and talk with a, a men's mentor and coach about how these things show up in your troubled marriage, if you're, if you're in a disillusionment stage yourself, if you're having a hard time getting along with a partner, I invite you to reach out and you can find a link below where you can set up a call with myself or one of the other mentors on Mentoring Men. We'd be happy to sit down with you, hear your story, talk about these things a little bit further and show you how to, to more effectively create the life that you want, a life with, with passion and romance and intimacy and connection and appreciation and respect and support and love. That's all available to any man the moment you're willing to stop living here and start living here. And we're experts at this in our community. We've helped a lot of men experience that and we're ready to do the same with you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. All that stuff helps us to get our message out in front of more people and to help more men who are suffering in their marriages and relationships. And with that, I wish you a good day. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.